Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a super exciting product to show you guys, which is this Raspberry Pi form fact called the Kiwi 310 from Axiom Tech with the Intel CPU. So let's check it out. Now I do want to thank Axiom Tech for sending this over to me and I've been actually waiting for a couple of months for this product to be shipped over to me. Originally, I think I emailed them I think beginning of October and they told me like I should be able to receive one in January just for testing purposes and I, I got really lucky and I guess they got it out to me a little bit earlier but yeah this is a super exciting product that I do want to play around with a lot of. I don't have much information as far as uh, price details or when they'll start shipping and everything because I got this ahead of time but I will update all the links down in the description below as they come through. So I'll leave the specs and everything down there but once they start doing product details and stuff like that where you could buy it how much it's going to cost i will leave a link down in the description below and update this video but otherwise what interests me the most is that this is raspberry pi shaped sbc so if you compare this to the raspberry pi it exactly lines up perfectly as well as all the screw holes and this also still contains a 40 pin gpio just like the raspberry pi now looking at this board you're going to see obviously the 40 pin gpio which is exactly the same as the raspberry pi you have the gigabit ethernet the usb 3 in the middle then the usb 2 on the left hand side just like the raspberry pi as well looking over to the side you have this little switcher with one and two when you plug in power it'll automatically turn on and the second button is to set it to firmware mode then after that you have the real-time clock battery and then you have these three little pins right next to that that's for the power and reset button then you have a micro hdmi and then a usb-c for power now the usb-c for power is not uh, as efficient as the raspberry pi because it actually uses 20 volt and 3 amps you need one of those power adapters that has the switching modes for 5 9 12 15 and 20 volts then this will be able to kick on it is not as power efficient as the raspberry pi but yeah it does work off the usb-c now on top you also got the m.2 e key unfortunately i actually don't have any e keys to test it out so i wasn't able to put anything in there but yeah that's mainly used for like um 5g cell phone or bluetooth wi-fi stuff like that it does not have built-in wi-fi so yeah that's out of the question now on the underside you got the intel cpu 3350 and this guy is a pretty good CPU comparing to all the other boards that are this similar size that's using the Z8350, which I'll complain about that in a sec. But on the bottom, you have the CPU, then you have the DDR4 RAM, and then the 64 gigabyte EMMC. Now the specs on this guy is Intel Celeron 3350. It's got dual core, clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz boost, four gigs of RAM DDR4, and 64 gigabytes of EMMC. For a little tiny guy like this, that packs a pretty good punch. A lot of Chromebooks don't even have 64 gigabytes of EMMC and it's using a similar CPU. Now back to what I was talking about with the Z8350s, uh, there were a lot of boards that were coming out with that CPU. Um, mainly the Atom, um, I got another Latte Panda with it, and a few other companies that was reaching out to me to test it out. I also got that uh, Picago that uses that CPU. I got another handheld laptop that also uses that CPU. And to be honest, that the Intel Z8350 is a little bit dated. I mean, it's barely could keep up with Windows 10. And if you're gonna try to install anything new or any games in there, it just struggles to run. So a lot of companies that reach out to me to test these boards, I actually have to decline because knowing what the CPU can do, I'm not gonna get much testing into it and I don't wanna show you guys another CPU that's not gonna be up to par because it's so dated. So when I saw this board come out with that Celeron 3350, I was like, whoa, this is a whole change because this CPU can actually work. It runs a lot of Chromebooks. I have a similar Chromebook that has the 3160 and that's only about like five to ten percent faster than the cpu and that runs windows 11 like a dream so if you've seen that video yeah this should be able to run windows 11 no problem and recently i've just been playing around with linux currently what's installed in here is pop os and i've just been playing around with some benchmarks playing around with some software and it's very very responsive so i really do enjoy using this board especially for the form factor and this could be like a little tiny thin client or this could also be some sort of IoT device. Um, 
especially because Axiom Tech will actually take special orders. So if you need anything specially crafted, like this case here, you could do that. This is only a demo board. But yeah, they will actually fulfill your orders if you need something industrial or commercialized. Um, they will actually make custom cases and custom um, housings for your board. So that's another feature that's coming out in the future in their site. But I'll leave a link to their main website and you can see what I'm talking about. But mainly what I'm excited for and what I'm super excited to show you guys is that because this is a different CPU than everything that we've been testing. Now it does support Windows, Linux, possibly Chrome OS, it supports Android. So you have a whole multitude of operating systems that you can install onto this guy. And it's using the Intel UHD 500 or 600. I'm gonna leave a link, I mean, I'll leave a text right here because I don't remember. But yeah, either the 500 or the 600, but the GPU is capable of running 4K video. So if you're gonna turn this into a little media device, that will run perfectly fine. This also has four gigs of RAM, so you're gonna be able to run something lightweight like XFCE or GNOME, in a sense, you could probably run. I'm running Pop! OS and it seems to be doing pretty good. For games, uh, it's anything that's before 2010. Anything newer than that, it's gonna be struggling. It could probably play like GTA on the lowest setting or possibly, like I said, older games as before 2010, you should have no problem. Now, one of the things is that now, it's because it's an x86, there's gonna be a lot of software that will work with this guy. That's how come I'm excited to test it. Instead of trying to cram x86 applications to work off the Raspberry Pi, now you just have a board that will work with x86. So this is definitely something to keep your eyes peeled about. Now it does come with a huge heat sink that covers the bottom for the Intel Celeron. It is passively cooled, so you don't need to put any fans on here. And I've actually benchmarked this and it doesn't get too hot. It actually cools it off enough where it doesn't throttle. So this heat sink, this little tiny heat sink actually does a pretty good job at keeping the heat displaced. And the crazy part is that I actually have this sitting downward. So it's like this most of the time and it still does a pretty good job. I didn't, I didn't flip it upside down to let the heat rise. I just placed it this way and it works fine. Anyway, that is it about this board. Um, those are all the specs that I really like. Uh, I will be testing this board in the future for a lot of other stuff. Um, I already have some stuff with emulation that I want to jump into playing PS2, PSP, stuff like that onto this board because this will support it. Uh, I also want to test this with the Windows operating system, possibly install Mac OS on here. So I'm going to go crazy with this board for the next week or two just to see how far I could take it. But I was just so excited that I got this board this week that I want to show you guys. So anything that I do on this video with this board, just keep in mind the CPU because that's going to be important. A lot of Chromebooks have the CPU. And if you've seen my video on how to install uh, Windows under Chrome or Linux into Chrome, you could possibly see how far you could take this board if you already have something with a similar CPU. So I know it's unavailable to get this product right now, but just keep that in mind. The CPU is what defines this device. And what we're going to be testing in the future is all that. That is it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this board or some info that I missed, which I probably did, um, let me know down in the description below and I'll try to answer my best ability. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.